So some of my fears are like um, uh, anesthesia, like not not waking up or not having a hard time waking up or um, waking up during the procedure. So that's like anxiety. Um, I'm concerned about scars because my th my surgeon doesn't um, have any pictures of any trans patients that she's worked on. She's really, really nice. She's really caring. Um, she's had, um, she's been doing plastic surgery for over 25 years, 26 years, I guess. Um, and um, she's worked on trans guys, but um, she doesn't have any pictures. And um, all the other pictures on her website, though, um, she does so many different types of procedures. All of her work looks good. Facelifts, tummy tucks, mommy makeovers, eye lifts, um, ear, whatever it's called when they make your ears go from sticking out um you know so she has a variety of breast augmentation all these all these things and all of her surgery well at least the pictures that are up obviously um they look good so they're a good representation i feel of her skill as a surgeon and talking with her during the pre-op appointment she was saying um the scar incision is going to be different than i've um normally seen it's a double mastectomy or mastectomy um but it it's, it's, it doesn't have the lines, you know how like it'll be the um I, they're almost like a happy face, you know it's not like that or the line like that. Um, she's her incision line is different, and so um, she said we're gonna <laughs> we're not gonna really have time, but she said we're gonna she's gonna explain it more to the day of the surgery and she's gonna because I was supposed to originally meet with her the day before surgery, but her secretary had told her that. Um, while I was there, that she was going to be out of town. So that's not going to happen. So the day of surgery, she's going to do her little drawing and stuff like that. When I left the pre-op appointment, I realized that this is like a thing where I have to... Sorry, I keep banging on the, the table that this is on. Um, I have to just trust the surgeon, you know. One of the things that, um, that I didn't uh, anticipate is that... Um, the post-surgery care is different too. So she said I should be okay to resume things after four weeks and I thought it was gonna be six to eight weeks. Um, one of the upsetting things is that post-op, she not upsetting, but just different. She wants me to have a sports bra and a zipper sports bra. Obviously I can't do a pullover one because I'm not gonna be able to lift my hands that high um, and just struggle with one anyway. So that's been a whole thing. Uh, last week and this weekend I was looking for a zip up um, you know because she doesn't want it to have cups I don't want it to have cups either uh, and you know it's, it's just been really hard to find and so um, I have one coming in the mail uh, I got two Fruit of the Loom ones from um, Walmart and they're like um, clasp like hook and um, then I got one zipper one from eBay, and it's an old style called the Player, and it's flat, um, no lines, no cups, and it's a zipper front. But they don't make it anymore, so I, I went to good old eBay to see if um, anybody was selling them. So that should be there here next Friday. Um, the ones from Walmart will be here um, supposedly on the tenth, either the ninth or the tenth. So. Post surgery, I'll be wearing um, a bandage that she gives me, um, but after that, I'll be in the sports bras for six to eight weeks. When I see her, because I haven't gotten to talk to her, I talked to her secretary last week. I'll have to tell her that um, it brought up a lot of dysphoria. Even the word bra, looking for a bra, I don't even know what size I wore. Like I haven't looked at a bra for years, like years and years and years, and so. <sighs> That's been hard because I wanted to be like, well, why can't I just wear a male vest or like a post-compression shirt, you know, that guys wear after, you know, their gynecostomy or I don't know how to pronounce that surgery. But, you know, when guys have um, kind of boobs and are big nipples and they have the surgery to fix their chest, you know, there's surgeons or compression, gar uh, compression garments post-surgery garments that they use and I'm like how come I can't just wear that but I think that um like I said I have to trust my surgeon and her post-op care is for a reason so um I, I don't think she wants me to be that bound she's also going to use a different kind of padding we're not going to use any tape 
because she says tape. Um, people sometimes are allergic to it or it'll cause wrinkles in the scarring and the incision. So, you know, I really just have to trust that she knows what she's doing and what she does. And so um, she also seems like the type of person that the surgery is catered to, to me and my body. And instead of just like um, with some of the surgeons out there that I've heard about, you know, you have one post-op. Um, appointment they take the drains out or one post-op appointment and they're just seeing how you're doing I think I have to see her at least two or three times she wants to check on how my scars are healing how my chest is you know how, how I'm doing so I'm kind of like uh, one of my friends said that I should really be grateful to the fact that she seems to care about me and how what her results are and my surgeon was also telling me about um, how um, she's a perfectionist and so I'm nervous so besides, so it's the anesthesia, the um, scars, and um, I think right now that's pretty much it, you know. So, yeah, so this is a long video. I might split it up into two. All right, peace. Thanks for watching.